All right, so I'm going to make a video review about the Apollo B Plus grinder here. I've had it for about two years and I'm, I've been really happy with it. No complaints whatsoever. And that's kind of why I'm making this review is because if you're thinking about getting a grinder, uh, I, I think this one is right up there at the top with all the, the best of them. And um, yeah, it does a great job. Now this runs about $300. So I'll link the, you know, the website in the description below. Um, why would I spend $300 on a hand grinder? Okay, so the quality that you get out of for $300 out of a hand grinder as opposed to an electric grinder is going to be much better. It's, also, it's quieter. You're not using electricity. Uh, so there's the power element, which is not a big deal for me. But um, anyway, um, the mobility issue is another thing. I've I'm in South Korea right now, so I was able to bring this from the U.S. to South Korea very easily. Um, actually, in this travel case that my friend got me, my friend Brent. Thank you very much, Brent. Um, so this travel case has been like, yeah, it's been really uh, useful. I bring it to family get-togethers. Uh, I've brought it camping, things like this. And basically, I'll show you quickly how, how you can pack it into the travel case. You just loosen the nut. This comes right out. I can pop it in. Let's see, I'll pop it in over here. You can see how it fits in very easily. Now, what I do is I, I'll replace this like that so it doesn't get lost. And then I can put this right in there. Okay, a couple accessories, other accessories I want to talk about. This is one of them. Uh, my friend Brent also got me two of these. These have been lifesavers. I, I can't even describe how irritating it was getting to have all the popcorning going on. So like toward the end of the grind, I would get bits and pieces shooting out of um, out of the grinder every time, like regardless, every time. And I was always hunting around picking these pieces up. Uh, I believe these are like a dollar each. So really, you only need one. He got me two. And the good thing about that is um, it came with two extra bands. Now, originally this came with only two bands and those would slip around quite a bit. And um, so I only had grip on two bands and then I was gripping around the base here and it was always slipping, especially when you get to like a, like a lighter roast and a finer grind. Uh, it takes a lot of strength to kind of grip this and keep it from like the bands from slipping when there's only two, but when there's six, it's very easy. So that's another thing I would recommend. Um, they sent two bands with each one of these. So they sent four and six, I think is the perfect amount. Uh, gives you excellent full coverage grip and I don't have any problems. Now, one of them is wearing out. I've had this for two years. So, you know, I guess that seems, you know, fairly reasonable, but um, here, let me get this back in. All right, so this just slides right in. Hole in the top. <clears throat> Let's talk for a second about the the grind settings. Okay, there's, it goes from zero to nine, and there's five notches in between. So I kind of think of this in terms of like, um, let's say a 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, and up to two like that. So um, let's say if we start from absolute zero, this will not move because the burrs will be locked together. Uh, so what I found is the starting place, I would say, is right around nine. Uh, you can use a nine for grinding espresso. Um, these days, honestly, I use between 10 and 10.0 six i would say i've been using right around 10 for medium medium dark like getting close to the dark roast uh i've been using 10.4 10.6 for for dark but um i've used light before it's been a long time since i've really like used in the bottom nines and i have tried eights before but that was like in the experimental phase when i first started generally it's, it's right around 10 and a little above um, okay, so this is not stepless. Okay, you've got you've got notches here, and it does click into place. And actually, I have no complaints about that. the the 
the tuning is very fine. It does like a really good job doing small increments and giving you reasonable adjustments for like if you want to fine tune it's a little bit sour you know and let's say you want to find it up a little bit um you know just if it's just a touch sour you know one click maybe two clicks might do it you know so all right um what would i use for something like a clever okay actually i'm going to go to v60 next because this is the finest of the grinds for the for the um, breweries that I have. So for the V60, I use probably around a, a 12, anywhere from a 12 to maybe like a 13.2, depending on the, the roast level. So now for a uh, lighter roast, I end up going finer. It's a more dense bean. It's harder to extract. So you want to go finer, uh, so that you're able to extract the flavor from the bean. So of course, hot water, you know, the hotter the water, the better and um finer the grind for for a light roast and a uh, uh, coarser grind for dark roast all right uh for the clever i end up using really like honestly i've been using a right around 13.4 uh, i've ranged from 13.2 up to about 13.8 um but you can you know you can experiment i'm just uh part of it is going with the the recipe as well i've been using a james hoffman clever recipe so I've got a French press as well. For the French press, I end up using, if I'm going like a medium grind to a medium coarse grind, uh, I'll use something between a 15 and 17 and uh, just adjust accordingly. And it also depends on the recipe but and the, and the roast. So if it's a darker roast, uh, I'll, I'll hit more around a 17, uh, 17 grind for that. So um, now, of course, yeah, recipes, you can take that into consideration. The Kasuya method uh, calls for a, like a really coarse grind. So I've done between 17 and 18 for, for the Kasuya method. So you're really, like in my opinion, you're pretty much dealing with the 10 to 18 range with this, with this grinder. Uh, but that really, it does a consistent job across that spectrum. I've, I've examined the particle sizes and they, you know, it just uh, fantastic. I, I'm really happy with the, the results. Okay, um, cleaning. One of the reasons I bought this grinder as opposed to some of the other ones is because it's easy to take apart. I've, I've done it before and maybe I'll do a, a video on that. Uh, easy to take apart and clean. Now this is really pretty much a zero retention grinder. I took it apart after about a year and cleaned it and there really wasn't that much to clean. Uh, the regular maintenance of this thing, especially if you're doing like a, like a darker roast, uh, where the oils have seeped from the from the bean, um, you'll get a lot of like grinds sticking. So uh, <clears throat> they'll stick in here, and they'll stick on the bottom. I don't know if you can really see in the camera there, but there's some grinds in the bottom. And uh, what I'll do here, I'm just gonna <clears throat> get this tray here. Okay. What I'll do is I'll just take a cloth or a, or a tissue or something like that, and I'll just go around on the inside here. Doesn't take long, and that knocks everything out. I do like one more round. Blow it a little bit, that's it. That's all it takes. So your regular maintenance for that. I'll bump this a little bit, and then I just I make sure to get the threads because uh, sometimes the grinds will build up in the threads and then it'll start to get difficult to screw back on. But basically if you kind of work it around like this, okay, that'll get all, yeah, threads are nice and clean. And then I just put this inside, work it around. <laughs> Boom, perfect, okay. So then I put it back on, easy to screw on. Okay, you can see there's there's kind of a lot of coffee built up there. It's been a while since I've cleaned it. The balance I like here rotates very nice and easily, very easy to grind. Uh, but what I'd like to talk about next is some techniques for using this grinder because it's not easy. Uh, it uh, especially if you're doing a fine a fine grind and a light roast. Okay, um, sometimes if I'm doing that sort of a situation, I'll hand this off to somebody. 
you know, like a, let's say a family member's over like that, and, and, and they're like, oh, whoa, what's this? Blah, blah, blah. So I'll, I'll hand this over to them to get them to grind, and they'll be like, what on earth? So difficult. Um, okay. Part of the reason they're struggling is because they don't have a, like a really good technique for using this grinder. And part of it is because it actually is, it can be pretty difficult to use. I've, I've built up some strength just from doing this every day. Um, but basically what I do is I'll put the beans in and what I do, like what I do is I'll measure out my beans in this tray and then I just pour it in like that. Yeah. Now, couple, the couple tips I have, what I do is I'll brace this against my stomach muscles like this and I'll, I'll keep my wrist flat. Now, these are a couple things I learned in, in Kung Fu and Tai Chi over the years. Um, keeping my wrist flat like this uh, will prevent any sort of a pain in my wrist after a while because if you're doing this every day, you got to do it right. Okay, so there also it's really easy to let that shoulder creep up and get some tension in there and try to use like muscle with your shoulder, but the shoulder doesn't do any good and you'll get shoulder pain after a while if, you, if you're doing this every day. So just keep your shoulder down and just hold it nice and tight against your stomach muscles and just grind like this. With the top, no beans are going to fall out. They probably wouldn't fall out anyway, but especially with the top on, they won't. Um, I find that's much more stable and predictable and just easier to use than, than to try to put it on a table and try, you see people like it's wobbling all over the place and they're trying to uh, get a, you know, keep it under control, but uh, it's, it's a little bit difficult when you're dealing with just the table. So I, I like to do it here and I can just whip it out, you know, whip out a, a batch of beans in no time like that. So, um, okay, um, let's see, anything else I wanna say about this? Okay. Uh, it does, yeah, like I said, it does do a uh, an espresso grind, and I think it does it pretty well. So uh, I've got this sort of machine. I talked about the portability uh, aspect of this. So I would say, you know, really, if you're going to do something like this, you probably want to go with a portable manual espresso maker as well. Um, this also folds up to, into a case. I'm going to probably do a video on this one in a little while. But... Um, I don't know. I think that's about it. $300, money very well spent. I'm not polluting, uh, you know, nearly as much anyway as I would be if if I went to a coffee shop. Uh, I can dial in my own beans. I can test out a bunch of different roasters and all the different beans that they have to offer. I think it's just a much more interesting experience to manually do something and to like kind of study the, the effects that the grind size has on uh, the outcome of the brew. So um, that's about it for this video. And uh, yeah, if you're thinking about getting one, I'll put the link in the description below and uh, you can take a look. Thank you.